it's a bit like Rosegar, Trumping, Ram kind of a thing. There was tremendous economic distress uh, and it has been building up. Uh, many of the viewers might recall that government's own data showed that unemployment hit a 45 year high in 2017-18. So this was just a year before they got re-elected. For a while, it appeared that all the disruption due to demonetization or continued lack of jobs in the economy could be papered over with some kind of a political narrative or a, or a desire to have a certain identity. But this election seems uh, like a step back where people have let uh, economic distress sort of uh, speak. The general sense of a little bit of fear among people, uh, even among, even among uh, decision makers, the corporate sector, I would say, the dominant corporate sector, the fear of speaking out, uh, the fear of agencies, uh, that was something which played on people's mind. Hi, today now we have uh, Udit Mishra with us and P. Vaitinath and Iyer. They're both uh, Indian Express's economy and political economy experts. You know, first for both of you, a uh, general question. For many people, this verdict has been a bit of a surprise, especially given the exit polls uh, that came out over the weekend. How do you see it? How do you see it just from your perspectives, both of you? Well, to my mind, uh, you know, it's a it's a bit like Rosegar, Trumping, Ram kind of a thing. Um, I Since I track economy and I've written extensively in the paper about it, there was tremendous economic distress uh, and it has been building up. Um, many of the viewers might recall that government's own data showed that unemployment hit a 45-year high in 2017-18. So this was just a year before they got re-elected. Um, and unemployment is central because it basically means future incomes will be depressed uh, and consumption will be depressed and all of that has been happening. Uh, and I think uh, uh, for a while it appeared that all the disruption due to demonetization or continued lack of jobs in the economy could be papered over with some kind of a political narrative or a, or a desire to have a certain identity. But this election seems uh, like a step back where people have let uh, economic distress sort of uh, speak uh, and I think that I think is a massive takeaway and that will be the main challenge for the whichever person takes over from here. Yeah. You know I have three four things which come to my mind immediately one is of course you know the distress that we talked about you know uh, probably at the bottom of the pyramid there was distress there was huge distress uh, because you know, there were not too many jobs and people even if there were jobs People were saying that you know they wanted government jobs, they want the security of the government jobs. In times, in distress times, security of jobs means a lot of a uh, lot to the people. That was number one. Second, I think you know the general sense of a little bit of fear among people, uh, even among even among uh, decision makers, the corporate sector, I would say, the dominant corporate sector, the fear of speaking out, uh, the fear of agencies. Uh, that was something which played on people's mind, uh, not just of the dominant corporate sector, but also people, they thought that, you know, okay, here is a party which is which has a tirade against corruption, but then here is also the party which takes corrupt, corrupt people into its fold. Yeah. You know, this dichotomy did kind of go down well with people. Uh, and probably, I think, uh, it showed in those states pretty sharply, like yeah. it showed in, say, Maharashtra, yeah. you know, where, uh, you know, Ajit Pawar kind of faces or not, an almost route. Uh, so I think that that something uh, played a lot in people's mind. So, you know, for both of you, both of you brought up, say, demonetization and the economic distress, now corruption. Arguably, some of that strength, especially this washing machine politics that some yeah. of the opposition had called, but say demonetization happens in 16. Then you have the pandemic, and arguably it was not handled as well as it could have been economically. Some have argued that the opposition did that. But with both those things in subsequent elections, in Uttar Pradesh, for example, we didn't see a political backlash. Yeah. So is there something that has that changed in the last six months, one year, two years? And especially with, you know, that's one of the big, the when the labor force data was out recently, this sort of, do you think we people have also read that data wrong? You're saying female labor force participation has gone up so much. Yeah. Rural India is working more. Yeah. Was that data read incorrectly, perhaps even by the ruling party in, when it, it ahead of its campaign? I feel that it was read incorrectly by the ruling party in particular. Because everybody else who read the data, and we have shown this in our pieces, 
that the increase in labor force participation, especially by women, especially by rural women, is essentially in distressed jobs, in kind of jobs which are uh, helping their own enterprises. So basically, just helping your husband because the incomes have fallen. Yeah. So you know, it's it is it's often like in medical tests we do we, we can do the test, but they always say go to a doctor for the yeah. analysis. And the analysis part of that was that labor force is rising, but because of distress in the economy. Government's own data is showing indebtedness has risen, liabilities have risen, savings have fallen repeatedly. So your in, your jobs are not happening. That's why I said jobs is the central thing. Your jobs are not happening. Your income levels have not gone up. Wages across the board are stagnant. And uh, we've shown in our own uh, pieces that inflation levels, uh, basically price rise has been of, of the kind that 32% price rise has happened since 2019. Now it is up to the reviewers to decide whether their incomes and salaries have gone up by 32% or not. If they have not gone up, if your salary or income has not gone up by 32% since 2019, you're worse off. And this is showing up in across the board in terms of consumption patterns, in terms of uh, your indebtedness. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think it's the, the denial part, first of all, that we will not accept that there was distress or there was any kind of problem and then reading it incorrectly to whatever extent you can. So, yeah, I think you know probably correct. You know, in the sense that there was distress, and the government response to distress was also there. So, I would not stop it at that. There was distress, and the government did not know about it or did not acknowledge it. So, if you look at how the government acknowledged, you know, they just universalized the five kg program, yeah. right? You know, so one aspect that people are not going to remain starved, people are not mm -hmm. going to sleep hungry. So that the government did and probably that Labharti of government, which was countered by Rahul Gandhi's, you know, my, his own Labharti of, you know, doubling it. Yeah. So probably that, you know, rang a bell or resonated with people because that was one probably need for that, for a large section of the people. And then the response, you know, of course, the government read it in a manner which pointed out very well, you know, there were a large number of women who were, who were working but not earning any much you know so that or, or earning anything yeah. you know so that numbers are very misleading when you say that you know employment numbers when you're talking about employment numbers one was that the second the counter which you know which showed in say the congress's manifesto that you know i will give 8500 rupees to a job seeker who's a graduate through an apprenticeship program or i'll give the woman head of a household you know 8500 rupees a month as an income support, you know, these are things which clearly suggest that people probably bought it. So I'm not very sure whether, you know, these freebies are what works in people's yeah. mind. Mm, because, you know, you get, when you go down to the street, you know, either in Maharashtra or in Tamil Nadu, you get very, very different views from, you know, hundreds yeah. of different people. Some say that, you know, pride is important for them, they don't want money. But then some say that, you know, this is important for us because it helps us survive. Uh, so I'm not very sure whether it works, but certainly distress was there and governments as well as the rivals have responded to that. Yeah. You know, just to push you on that, you know, one of the things the opposition had said, I mean, Rahul Gandhi, it's, one is of course about the quantum of right, the, you can call it the welfare that you're giving out. Yeah. Ka, ka diya, yeah. You know, the second was Rahul Gandhi's pitch or the Congress's pitch this time, which starting from the manifesto and then in more simplistic forms that you do on the campaign trail yeah. of course was that ours is a rights-based approach yeah. we are saying you are a citizen and this is a right mm -hmm. whatever it is whether it's starting from manrega and earlier you beat them and now to haq ki hai, hai. Mm -hmm. ha. versus this labharti thing which is which seems from the old perspective mm -hmm. a more oh look what i'm giving you and the fact that you made everything something that the prime minister was giving it wasn't even government giving it, Modi ki guarantee. You know, do you think that had an effect in some way that that people, I mean, like we all of us would like a tax break in a free this day, but to be told that Mene aapke jeb mein dala. Do you think that that just the coinage of that from a political economy perspective? Yeah. So it matters a lot. You know, say for instance, but it matters in too many ways. For instance, in state states, it matters because you know the symbolism of any state benefit which is given to people if it comes in the form of say one particular grant 
one, it antagonizes an opposition state. Say, for instance, if there is a YSRCP government in Andhra Pradesh, it doesn't like the ration being sold as, say, Modi's program. Huh? It doesn't like Modi's picture yeah. in that. You know, there have been, say, to and fro on health schemes also yeah. between yeah. states. So one aspect is that, that people think that, you know, center is an entity, but all the works happens in states. So yeah. there is no central geography, yeah. so to say, right? So one is that. The second is I think people also think that uh, that I am giving you, I am giving you is probably not something which uh, which is appreciated by the most people. I think there is a right based approach, be it from for information or from you know uh, what is due to them for no fault of theirs. You know they are on a you know far behind in the starting exactly. line. So you know that yeah. those things do play a role. I would I would say that you know. You just look back on when, uh, you know, in, in US, the US president is openly saying that trickle down doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Now, US is by, there is no comparison between yeah. the average income Absolutely. levels. And we are as an economy saying that trickle down is the approach. So there is a question mark also on the role of government in this uh, economy. Uh, and whether, you know, it doesn't look like Congress has won the election, but the question mark on the role of government in this economy is is something that is central. Uh, you know, again, goes back to what we wrote when the COVID uh, phase, second phase was happening. That particular year, in the year when the second wave has happened, the government has cut its health budget. Yeah. So this is this is very serious. That you know, and why these things will show up now and didn't show up earlier yeah. could be also because of a lot of factors, in particular like. Are voters trying to uh, vote for their state yeah. or they are voting for the national? So, and also a whole host of other political issues. 